Rob, what is our second main topic today? John, our second main topic comes to us from Diego. That's topical too. As I am typing this, the streaming giants are eagerly awaiting the results of Netflix's quarterly earnings. While this normally isn't something we would cover, according to reports, if Netflix dramatically underperforms, it could change the shape of the streaming wars as we know it. I was hoping you could speak on Netflix's quarterly results and what it means for the future of the company. All right. Thanks a lot for sending that in, Diego. Okay. This is, this is very, today is a very big day. Netflix is doing their quarterly earnings call and it'll happen at end of business today. So what time do we say that was like 4.30 Eastern Standard Time? Yeah, so like 1.30? Between 4 and 4.15. After Pacific the markets time. close. Yeah, so after the markets close, <laughs> which is probably a good thing. <laughs> now, we know what happened last time. Netflix, for the first time in their history, had to report a loss of subscribers, a net loss. I mean, they're always gaining and losing subscribers, of course, but overall, a net loss. And that immediately had a profound impact on their stock price, which made Netflix, in a blink of an eye, lose billions of dollars. Today, they're expecting to announce, and I think, what was it? I think it was like 30,000 subscribers they lost. That's a drop in the bucket to the overall number of subscribers they have. Today, the expectation is that they're going to announce a loss, an additional loss of one to two million subscribers. You got to keep in mind that it was not long ago that Netflix stock price was hovering around $700 a share. As of this morning, I don't know what it is at this. Jonathan, maybe you can look it's this like up 200. for me. It just hit 200, but I think it'll count. It there. just hit 200. So it's going to, so it got to 190 last night. It's at 200 right now, which is like it dropped by like over 60% the stock. But if the announcement does come out and is between one and two million, it could be catastrophic. This comes to us from the folks over at The Wrap who write the following Hollywood is bracing for impact. Netflix financial results on Tuesday could become a defining moment for the entertainment industry's multi-billion dollar streaming's arms race. The streaming giant reported its first quarterly subscriber loss in more than a decade in April and warned that there are about 2 million more global customers to go. The reaction was swift, with Netflix stock catering 70% this year to wipe out billions of dollars in market value and unleashing a wave of fear that studios might need to reconsider prioritizing streaming over legacy businesses like television and theaters. This could be the kind of end of days, biblical prof prophecy, estacological moments uh, if you're Bob Chapek, Bob Baskish, or David Zaslav, one analyst who covers the major studios told The Wrap, there is not one meeting or lunch happening in Hollywood over the next few days that isn't a wall of worry. <laughs> Listen, when I said off the top of this that today could be, could be, possibly, apocalyptic, I wasn't exaggerating because we saw what just happened when they announced just 30,000 loss of subscribers, 70% decline in stock price, billions of dollars of value wiped out. And it all comes from a place that you and I have been proposing for years. Streaming cannot be the be all and end all. It is just a model that does not work as your primary content device. It, we've been saying it for years. It just doesn't. And eventually, we've said for years, it's going to hit the wall. Ladies and gentlemen, meet the wall. <laughs> the wall is here. The, the wall is here. And we're not talking about the Night's Watch. The wall is here. Or Pink here. Floyd. Or Pink Floyd. The wall is indeed here. Now, this is where it really becomes a problem. Let's jump over to the Campy Classroom for a second here. Because, you know, Rob and I were, were talking about this yesterday a little bit about here's where it really becomes a problem. Because you might ask yourself, okay, Netflix loses 30,000 subscribers. Why does that crash, you know, the... Uh, the uh, the stock the stock price so like why should that affect the stock price or anything like that because here's the problem if you're a shareholder right what you want right you buy shares not just to have them because then you might as well just put your money in a, in a savings account in your bank you want your um, value 
Valky, you want your value to go up, right? If you're a shareholder, you buy stocks, you hold stocks because you want the value of those stocks to go up. You want to see a return on your investment. With streaming, uh, let's see, with streaming, uh, stock equals subs. Subscribers and a growing business is what equals stock value going up. Maintaining is good, but nobody buys stocks and nobody buys shares in Netflix at, say, $190 to go, boy, I hope in two years my stock is still worth $190. Right. <laughs> That's not why anybody does it. In business, the um, stop, I'm going to say the stop of growth. That's terrible English. The stop of growth, as, as in biology, equals death. When Netflix hits a wall and says, we are no longer gaining subscribers, we are now losing subscribers, and we're spending more money in content development than we ever have, oh, and our most popular content isn't actually our content, it's content that belongs to other studios, and they're taking those licenses back now. That equals you, if you're a shareholder, that you no longer value your stock and you want to sell your stock. As more people sell their stock, the value of the stock drops. Hence, we saw what happened when they announced that 30,000 people, a net 30,000 people left Netflix. What happens if they announce that 1 million people leave Netflix or 2 million or God forbid more? Because Netflix warned three months ago, that the next earnings call could have up to 2 million lost subscribers. If they come out, so, so the market's already a little bit prepared for that, but if they come out and say it's like 2.5 million lost subscribers, I fear it's going to be apocalyptic for them. I think we could see stock, Jonathan, you know the stock market way better than me. Am I crazy to say if they come out and announce like 2.5 million, that we could see this $200 stock drop to double digits, drop to like $85? Yeah, uh, so... I think that some loss is already priced in. And I mean, the gain that you're seeing right now is like a 5% gain on the stock. Excuse me. Um, I think that's just some optimism leading into after hours. If they underperform more than what's been priced in, it's going to be exaggerated. So the sell-off in after hours and then tomorrow would be pretty great. You guys don't know that Jonathan Boyko is our resident uh, stock expert. Yes. He, he, he teased me all like Okay, so it looks bleak and it looks bad. But I'm here to tell you, as we go back over to the Campy classroom, that there is hope. Jonathan, let's, let's bring that back up again. I'm here to tell you that if you're Netflix, there is hope. There is. That's the good news. There are two things that you have to be hopeful of if you're Netflix, right? A new tier. They are introducing... A new cheaper level tier. A t I think they're saying it's a ten dollar a month tier. Is it IR? Yeah, this IR. Sorry. Yeah. A new tier. It's not TI. I, I'm sorry, I'm trying to type and talk at the same time. Yeah, there you go. They're introducing a new tier, a cheaper level tier that will attract or induce back, entice people who have left to come back with a cheaper level tier that will be ad supported. Another thing is. Ads are coming. If you are on one of the cheaper level tiers and you're a stockholder, they just announced the other day their partnership with Microsoft for putting ads on Netflix, right? This means, hey, the company I'm a shareholder of has a new revenue stream, new financial growth, possibly. <laughs> so, I mean, that's the hope, right? New financial growth. Yay. So that's coming. That is, should give you hope. Three, um, what's the words, uh, you know, uh, coming down hard on sharing. So basically password sharing. They've, we've talked about this over the past couple of months that Netflix is about to roll out new security measures to really crack down on, on password, e illegal password sharing, which means you're going to see some people go, well, then I'm never going to use Netflix, but you are also going to see some people, damn it. Now I don't have my free Netflix. All right. I'll subscribe to one of those things that could equal a net gain in new subscribers. So, it looks bad. Today could be a complete apocalypse. But there is some reason to hope and to be optimistic if you are a Netflix 
uh, uh, shareholder in over the next year or so because there are these things coming that could improve Netflix's situation. Anyway, Rob, let's go over to you on this. Uh, you've read the articles. You know what today represents. Tomorrow, I'm sure we're going to be talking about this because, hey, let me be balanced here. I said if it's over 2 million subscribers dropped, it's going to be really, really bad. Hey, they told people it's going to be 2 million loss. What if it's only 500,000 loss? I mean, that's still really bad, bad, but it's way better than they were warning people. So maybe then it won't be as bad. Hey guys, we want to take a second and thank the sponsor of this video, BetterHelp. You know, in the age of social media, you might think that everybody's life except yours is perfect because everybody always posts the best memories, the most glamorous shots. But you and I both know that's not how life is. We get pitched some serious curveballs, and sometimes it seems like a lot of them. And you know, we always encourage each other to get out there and to get into better physical physical health, going to the gym and eating right, but it's about time we started paying more attention to our mental health as well. And that's where our friends at BetterHelp come in. Because see, BetterHelp is not a crisis line, it's not self-help. It is professional therapy done securely online, available to people worldwide. You can log on to your account anytime and send private messages to your therapist, or you can schedule weekly or phone-only sessions if you're one of those people that's not really comfortable being on camera. And getting therapy every week is as easy as just a few clicks on your laptop laptop or phone. It is time to invest in your own mental health and BetterHelp is a great way to invest in yourself. And right now they have a special offer for all of the John Campia Show listeners to get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash Campia. That's 10% off your first month of online therapy at betterhelp.com slash Campia. Anyway, you see all this. What's your takeaway? Well, first of all, I like Netflix. Oh, I, I, like, love I, I like Netflix a lot. And I think one of the great things about Netflix is their international programming, which I don't think they get enough credit for. Squid Game was a result of that. Um, there's so much great worldwide programming. The movie RRR, which you should check into because it's really amazing. That's More people are going to get exposed to worldwide content. Nobody has better worldwide content than Netflix. Uh, by a mile. But, by uh, a uh, mile. Uh, their documentary content's excellent. And they're expanding into more more houses in India. The problem is there's only f there's a finite amount of households around that they can access, but as they move into different countries and different territories, so there's going to be growth there and they're a great streaming service. They don't deserve to fail. You know, another thing I think Netflix should do, I still don't understand how they could spend $200 million on a red notice and $220 million on The Gray Man and expect that 400 almost half a billion dollars to translate into some kind of subscribers that make it worthwhile i can't imagine what they need to do and by the way nobody pays attention if if netflix is going to release a movie in the theaters a 200 million dollar movie nobody takes it seriously they don't have the ad campaign I, I mean i don't understand why netflix doesn't create a new distribution model a theatrical distribution model don't call it netflix come up with a new name so people don't think oh it's just a netflix movie well, I mean, in their defense, Amazon Studios has released a few movies under the yeah. Amazon, and they've they've, but, they've shown they can. But work. Amazon Studios even existed before they had their. Well, that's stream, you know what? That's you know? a very good point. They that's they had an Amazon Studios was was they were prestige titles. They made things like Manchester by the Sea, yep. which was amazing. I think if a movie like 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 The Gray Man had a, a theatrical marketing campaign six months out, there are trailers in the theaters. You've got Chris Evans and Ryan Gosling in a movie, and Anna De Armas. I mean, three you, of the biggest movie stars in the world right now. Yeah, you, you put those trailers in theaters for six months, you could do a hundred million dollar opening weekend, and then everyone knows that these particular movies are the only way to see them. They're not coming out of home video, they're not coming out no physical media, they're not going to HBO, they're only going to Netflix. They're gonna get if Gosh, you got Rob, that sounds a lot like Disney Plus's strategy. Wow. Uh, right. Right. And, and they're not doing pretty bad. Yep, they're, they're not doing, doing all bad. right. And I'm thinking, why isn't that their strategy? Because they're the at least make their money back on that two hundred million dollar spend. Well, and more importantly, because you've pointed this out before, right? You put the gray man in theaters first. You give it a marketing campaign. You make back one, two, three, four hundred million dollars. Especially worldwide. You get that movie into China? And then you put it on Netflix, and even more people are going to be interested in watching on Netflix than if you skip the theatrical. But, and I'll tell you something, because a two hundred million dollar movie, when you put that on Netflix, it's no different than an episode or two hours of a reality show that they put on Netflix. Yeah. It's all the same. Nobody's thinking to themselves, well, I gotta watch this because it costs two hundred million dollars. 
they would watch it if they knew it was opening in the theaters and there was word of mouth and there was advertising and they knew it was there. So it had value. The problem with Netflix movies like Red Notice is there's no value to them. They cost $200 million, but they're not, they're like, no, it's the same two hour block of time. You're going to watch anything. And that's why it's not working. We, you read that article. You found that article. We covered it on this show. Netflix original programming is not generating subscribers because nobody knows it's coming. Nobody mm-hmm. knows it's there. Even if you have The Rock and Ryan Gosling and you are uh, uh, Ryan Reynolds and you have Gal Gadot in a movie, that should be in theaters. It should. People should be waiting for it. My mom would be like, "Oh, there's that movie with that big guy, The Rock. <laughs> Is it on Netflix now?" You know. I mean, my mom doesn't know. But if you if you have trailers and she takes her grandkids to it, they see a trailer for that movie. Oh, that looked. I I I majored in art history in school. It's about an art heist. I Someday we have to actually have your mom on the show. She's she's actually she doesn't sound like that. <laughs> she's actually good on camera. But but it's like you know what I mean? Like none of they don't create any value to their really expensive programming and they're expecting it to generate subscribers. Why? Why would you subscribe to Netflix to see a movie that you know nothing about? You know, what did the article say? I think the article is saying something about how there was the survey done by the online firm and they said like out of the top, what, 20, 20 IPs that made the audience subscribe to a channel, only one of the top 20 was a Netflix one. Yeah. They're not attracting subscribers. Because with nobody their original knows content. what they are. Yeah. And look, nobody knew it. Squid Game had to build word of mouth. Now, yeah, it got there. But nobody was anticipating it. And I'm sure Netflix wasn't anticipating that Squid Game would suddenly because become a water cooler title. And, and look at Stranger Things Season 4. You, We can talk about how Stranger Things Season 4 broke all these viewership records. Yes, but the underlying problem, and this is a problem, a systemic problem with the model, is that nobody signed up for Netflix for Season 4 of Stranger Things. They were already fans of Stranger Things. Yes. And they were already subscribed to the channel. So, yay! It broke all of our viewership records. Yay! It didn't actually do anything for them. I mean, you know, there, there's there been talk. There's an upcoming uh, TV series coming out, and I was talking to the showrunner about it. I can't say what, what it is, but they were talking about releasing the final two episodes theatrically. Right. It's that good. Like, Which That's... we've seen the opposite. We've seen the first episode in humans. Oh, my God. Release the first two episodes in theaters. Remember that? <laughs> I mean, can you imagine if, if the last episode of Stranger <laughs> Things, which was two and a half hours long, Got was first released release in theaters for a couple of days exclusively. Yeah, and it was the hundreds ninth, of millions, hundreds of millions, hundreds of millions. Uh, you would have got you hundreds of millions, and you've got eight episodes, and then you lead into this two and a half hour finale, only in theaters, until it's not right. You know, and you're not going to see. Uh, why not do that? They got to innovate. They got to innovate. Anyway, guys, listen. I'm sure this is going to be something we're going to pick up tomorrow, and maybe tomorrow will come, and it'll be. You know what? It wasn't all that bad. Or we might be talking about how much time does Netflix have left? I mean, I, I don't know. It's a wide range of possibilities here. Question is for you guys. What do you think about this and all these articles and reports and research being done on what's going on with Netflix right now? What do you think is going to happen at the end of the day today? Do you think we're going to hear about a whole ton of lost subscribers? Or are you going to hear that things are actually pretty good? Whatever you guys think, jump down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts.